One of the significant factors that have contributed to securing American interests around the globe is the U.S. policy of keeping military bases in foreign territories. With no other nation in the world having as many military posts worldwide, the U.S. has been able to deploy its mighty military in ways no other country has been able to. But the policy has come at a price. U.S. military bases in other countries have caused more than their fair share of tensions and political controversies, and the U.S. has been forced to develop innovative ways to protect them without increasing diplomatic tensions. Enter the Active Denial System, a groundbreaking non-lethal directed energy weapon created by the U.S. military for area denial, perimeter security, and crowd control as safely and effectively as possible. As a hostile crowd enters the perimeter of the U.S. military, the mobile active defense system can engage large groups of intruders by emitting a beam of concentrated energy that immediately causes significant discomfort. Despite many considering it a technological marvel, controversy has surrounded the weapon, with an unfortunate incident in 2007 putting the entire project at risk. Protecting Military Infrastructure For decades, non-lethal crowd control solutions used by American law enforcement in the U.S. military have showcased several significant flaws that have resulted in tragedy. Conventional counter-personnel non-lethal weapons like rubber rounds, beam bags, and water cannons use kinetic energy to break hostile groups apart and dissuade them from advancing on a specific perimeter. However, kinetic-based systems present a significant risk of human injury, depending on the part of the body the weapon makes contact with and the environmental characteristics in a specific scenario. A rubber round might be mostly non-lethal by itself, but it can push an intruder off a tall structure. As such, the technology becomes harder to control. Additionally, the effectiveness of conventional kinetic solutions fluctuates drastically depending on the target's size, age, and gender, making it unreliable and prone to fatal accidents. If a kinetic weapon is designed to take a hostile male out of a battle unharmed, the effects could be considerably more severe if the same system is used against a female perpetrator. To make matters worse, most of the non-lethal kinetic perimeter enforcement solutions also display a minimal range, especially compared to lethal weapon systems. This resulted in military personnel being exposed to higher levels of risk to confront the threat. Thus, the U.S. military needed a non-lethal weapon system capable of offering much more control, more extended range and reliability, and as minor collateral damage as possible, especially when defending military infrastructure on foreign soil, politically unstable territories, and regions where they cannot rely on law enforcement support. Developing an effective system, regardless of size, age, and gender, and with a superior range compared to small arms fire, became a priority for the U.S. Defense Department. Soon, the solution would come knocking at their door. Origin of a Heat Ray Military research around the globe has significantly focused on the development of directed energy weapons. From missile-destroying lasers, to nuclear-focusing space beams, to microwave crowd control devices. Such futuristic technology appears to be feasible enough to attract the attention of military investment. The premise is simple. Generate significant amounts of energy, magnify it to be delivered to its target, and effectively neutralize it. The Active Denial System, or ADS, works by unleashing a high-powered 100 kilowatt beam of 95 gigahertz waves at a target and effectively heating its skin to a highly uncontrollable level while remaining non-lethal. The blast produced by the device is similar to the energy produced by a microwave oven. The main difference is that the waves deployed by the ADS can travel for very long distances while still providing enough power for successful deterrence. In 2002, an early version of the ADS was developed for the U.S. Advanced Concept Technology Demonstration Project. The scheme allowed technology innovators to swiftly build prototypes for emerging technology and demonstrate the concept to possible government investors and military manufacturers. The result was a rudimentary crowd control system designed for law enforcement and prison riot scenarios. The device had a minimal range, and it showcased numerous flaws and probable risks. Still, the demonstration was impressive enough to gain the attention of the Defense Department, who decided to invest in the project and further optimize the technology. In 2004, 
the U.S. Defense Department signed a contract for $6.3 million to develop a single optimized 95 gigahertz millimeter wave source system capable of providing perimeter denial for military infrastructure. With the backing of the U.S. military, the ADS system evolved swiftly. By 2005, advanced prototypes were ready for testing on human targets. Characteristics and Tests The optimized ADS prototypes consist of a high-power linear beam vacuum tube array called a gyrotron that produces millimeter wave electromagnetic waves by cyclotron resonance of electrons within a powerful magnetic field. The electromagnetic waves produced by the device are then channeled through a flat antenna-like contraption that directs the energy to its intended target with an operating distance of up to 800 feet. Two variations of the ADS were produced, and the technology prototype integrated the system into a high-mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicle. Meanwhile, the tactical version was built like an armored, containerized system, transportable by military armored vehicles. Contrary to many rumors that have spread since its unveiling, the ADS does not use laser beams, radioactive materials, or wavelengths equal to that of a microwave oven. In fact, the system is designed to avoid causing permanent damage and radiation harm or skin burning. As opposed to the 2.45 GHz a microwave oven operates at, the ADS unleashes waves at 95 GHz, and the much shorter wavelength can travel longer distances while only capable of penetrating 1 64th of an inch of the target's skin, causing an overwhelming burning sensation but not delivering permanent damage. If the system unleashed energy on the same wavelength as a microwave oven, the heat would penetrate the target several inches deep, causing more damage to the receptors. The different versions of the ADS have undergone numerous tests and thorough assessments, and over 13,000 controlled exposures have been carried out with the help of volunteers, both in static demonstrations and in realistic simulations. An Air Force Research Laboratory member recalled his experience as a test subject for the ADS, quote, For the first millisecond, it just felt like the skin was warming up. Then it got warmer and warmer, and you felt like it was on fire. As soon as you're away from that beam, your skin returns to normal, and there's no pain. Many other volunteers described being exposed to the heat ray as very similar to the temporary heat felt by opening the door to a hot oven. The sensation is strong enough to trigger a nearly instantaneous reflex action to flee from the beam. Controversy Of the thousands of tests performed on human volunteers, only two serious injuries occurred. The first case happened in January of 1999, when the ADS technology was still in its early development phase. In it, a researcher was exposed to a not-yet-optimized beam of heat, resulting in a quarter-sized blister that healed in a couple of weeks. The second occurrence took place in April of 2007, when an airman volunteer was injured during a training exercise, receiving second-degree burns from overexposure to the ADS due to human error and procedural miscalculations. The wounded soldier made a full recovery, but the event dramatically crippled the untethered development the ADS had enjoyed until then. Despite ADS researchers assuring that injury probability is as low as 1%, and that kinetic non-lethal weapons have a much higher risk of delivering permanent damage, many critics have questioned the technology after the 2007 incident, citing the long development and lack of deployment as a sign that there is something wrong with it. Other detractors point to the fact that the ADS can easily be turned into a severely harmful weapon if misused or in the hands of untrained personnel. Whatever the reason, the ADS has not seen any combat usage, despite being deemed ready for deployment since 2007. Only a few ADS units were deployed during the war in Iraq, but they ended up not being used, fueling its detractors' suspicions even further. Thank you for watching our video. Do you think replacing kinetic, non-lethal weapons with the ADS makes sense? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more warfare technology content. Stay tuned.